I, I don't even know how to introduce our guest today, DB. I might call on you for help, um, but I got definitely speak on how one of our guests' father uh, impacted our lives. Um, being a kid born, born in the seventies and growing up in um, East Oakland, California. And at that time, looking for representation that we could be inspired by, that we, we couldn't find on the big screen often and we couldn't find on the TV screen often. And so we look for heroes uh, that we could relate to. One of those heroes, man, I swear through my childhood years, I thought I was a, a, one of the best kung fu fighters that Oakland had ever seen. Oh, I mean, I had an ill stance, and, you know, and I could make the kung fu noises because that's what I thought meant what it meant to be a kung fu fight, uh, you know, artist. Are you admitting to one thing that you weren't good at? No, I wasn't at all. Was not. I was not good at it. But wow, it's a new day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, movies like The Chinese Connection, Fist of Fury, all, all uh, you know, um, and Big even Boss. Big Boss, um, and and even listening to her father talk and his philosophies on life uh, helped us get through some uh, really challenging situations as, as kids, and it helped make us feel good. So we adopted a lot of the culture, not really understanding where it came from, but understanding that there were parallel similarities that we can identify with. Uh, and to me, um, I put him in terms of my heroes, along with the Muhammad Ali's, along with the Malcolm X's, along with the Melly Mel's from the Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, um, this guy has been a part of my DNA. I'm talking about Bruce Lee, and I have his wonderful daughter um, with us right now who's actually ex executive producer of the new series Warriors, which is premiering Friday, April 5th on Cinemax, the one and only Shannon Lee. Woo! You did it! Shannon Lee, my sister, has come home! Thank you, thank you. Do you it, feel an attachment because Bruce was born in the Bay? I, now, well, I was going to get there, too. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm from Oakland, Shannon, so it could be something here. I don't know. <laughs> well, my brother was born in Oakland. Your brother was born in Oakland? Yep. Brandon was born in Oakland? Yep. At what okay. hospital? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo! What hospital? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head because that was before I was born, but my parents um, lived in Oakland. They had their, My father had his second school in Oakland. And I think that's why I swear to you on everything, everybody in <laughs> Oakland... Loved your dad. Yeah. We grew up loving who your dad, even after he passed. We didn't, yeah. he didn't pass to us. He's yeah. still here to us. Definitely. Wow. Okay, she didn't come along. <laughs> <laughs> DB, you want to do the honors with Jonathan? Yeah, we got a guy who's a, a acclaimed author. He's written several books that have been uh, uh, turned into films or been at least uh, a, a proposition to be uh, turned into films. Even one of them, I think, was J.J. Uh, Abrams had some interest in, in one of your projects, I yeah, believe. Yeah, he's had it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's been a little busy. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it's still a notable person to uh, show interest in your work. And uh, this guy is the creator and EP as well of this series, which me and Sway both watch. And we were talking about it all morning ever since we started watching some of the episodes. And we both love it. We're both fans of martial arts and what you guys were able to do with this uh, project. And Jonathan Tropper is here. John Jonathan Tropper. <laughs> Thank you. What's up, JT? Happy to be here. Can I call you JT? Everyone does. Okay, good. <laughs> they don't get you confused with Justin Timberlake? Only when we're in the same room. Okay. <laughs> uh, Shannon, this is such a fascinating story because um, let me tell you how we heard it okay. as kids, but you could tell us the truth. Um, when we used to all watch David Carradine, Kung Fu series, we all watched it. I thought it was great. I, you know, I thought, oh, wow, what a great concept here. I didn't like how they slowed down the moves. <laughs> you know, I thought that was a little weird, you know, when they went into slow motion and some of the scenes. But I thought what the what the messaging was all about and uh, what that character was supposed to stand for in the uh, Far Eastern philosophies of life we were learning uh, here in the States. And later on, uh, we start hearing that, well, that's not the original. The original concept was something that Bruce Lee wrote and that Hollywood uh, um, appropriated his concept. Um, and created something that they thought was more digestible to mainstream America and didn't want to see, or didn't think a Chinese man can play a lead role in a series quite like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we didn't hear nothing else about it. We heard that Bruce Lee wrote the original series. Mm -hmm. And this is it. <laughs> and this is it, yeah. This is uh, based on my father's treatment. He wrote it. 50 years ago now at this point. Wow. And yeah, this project has been in development for 
50 years. Uh And, um, you know, he pitched it to Warner Brothers. He was supposed to star. And they said, uh, sorry, no, uh, your Chinese American audiences won't go for that. So... Uh, and then Kung Fu came out, uh-huh. and they Warner Bros. always maintained that that was their idea, that they that was separate and apart. And you know, I'm not going to get into get into <clears throat> it right now. But um, you know, it was my father's idea to set this in the Old West, uh-huh. um, and uh, but his idea was very different from from what Kung Fu. How so? Came. Well, his his was really so in Kung Fu. It's a monk, uh-huh. sort of like peaceably. Uh, wandering around the Old West. And in my father's version, um, he's this uh, martial arts warrior who comes across looking for uh, something that you'll find out as you watch the show. But um, but he gets embedded into the tongs yeah, but, as, a, as a hatchet man. Okay, and the tongs are an yeah. organized crime syndicate, or how would you describe that? Well, I mean, I don't know if you want to describe it. Yeah, um, essentially, because the Chinese immigrants kept kept coming over as laborers, Uh uh, these organizations were formed that were actually hospitality organizations to help them when they arrived in Chinatown. But as these organizations grew in power and scope, they started getting into organized crime. And Uh it's kind of your typical story in any culture. And gradually, these families uh, became very large uh, organized crime families. And then they began to go to war with each other. Okay, mm. and they had in their employ these these enforcers that that they called hatchet men who carried these short hatchets. Uh huh. And and this is set at a time period around eighteen hundred seventies, right? Eighteen seventy eight. Eighteen seventy eight. Um, is that and it's based out of San Francisco. <laughs> yep. Um, is that? I mean, what kind of research did you like? Was that just out of his mind, or was that actually what the conditions were at that time in San Francisco in Chinatown? Oh no, those were actually the conditions in Chinatown okay. at the time, okay. but this was also purposefully out of my my father had done research about this time okay. as well. So he okay. purposefully wanted it to be set during this time during the Tong Wars, which uh-huh. was a, a historical uh, th- thing that happened. <laughs> and also at a time right before the Chinese Exclusion Act was going to be enacted into uh-huh. law, which is an immigration law that banned the immigration of Chinese people to the United States. Uh-huh. And so he very purposefully picked that time because my father really always wanted to highlight like authentic Chinese stories. Um, uh, so so it's real, but it's very real, you know, and Jonathan had to do a lot of research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you, well, talk about the research you did. Well, you know, when I first got uh, asked, I, I was finishing up another show for Cinemax called Banshee, and we were in our last mm-hmm. season of Banshee, and they knew I was a lifelong Bruce Lee fan, and I'd been a martial artist my whole life, and the opportunity to meet Shannon and Justin Lin and read pages written by Bruce Lee was just something I couldn't pass up. But uh-huh. what amazed me when I read them is this time period I knew nothing about. Um, there, none of my American history classes ever really dwelled on the Chinese experience uh-huh. in America. And um, so once I read up a little bit about the Tong Wars, I didn't know what Tongs were, I didn't know what the Tong Wars were. Uh, I wanted to understand sort of the political conditions at that time, and it's very hard to do because uh, the Americans didn't really write a lot of history about the Chinese immigrants. And the Chinese immigrants at that time, I think, were too busy surviving to keep great records. And then there was the big fire in 1903 in San Francisco that wiped out whatever records yeah. there were. So it's yeah. a, it was finding a lot of books and articles and letters and <clears throat> legal documents and just kind of figuring out, you know, the laws against the Chinese and, you know, the the court cases with the Chinese, the fact that Chinese people couldn't bear witness at a trial, the, the uh-huh. fact that, you know, if uh, the penalty for killing a Chinese person was 20 bucks. Yeah. You know, there, there was all this stuff I found just by going through the legal papers, and it started to form this, you know, really clear picture of why Bruce Lee had picked this time. The, the xenoph- xenophobia. It's insane. It's insane. And this was in 18, in the 1800s, and I, I almost, you know, we're in the 2019, and we're witnessing it now. Yep. Yep. But damn it, I, I'd rather be in 2019 than what we were seeing in the 1800s. Although what's crazy is uh, when we started, you know, when I started writing the pilot even, you know, we had a different president here and this conversation wasn't at the top of of the news, you know, Uh of the headlines. And by the time we were getting into prep, suddenly there was another exclusion act going on and suddenly we were, you know, we were, uh, our country was making uh, exclusion acts against Muslims and Uh against other people. And you realize that 
this country is built on the backs of immigrants, and yet it, it has never made peace with how to treat the immigrants. Hello. Uh-huh. And okay. uh, it's still going on. What I liked about um, Andrew, is it Ko- Koji? Koji. Koji. Oh, Andrew Koji's character, Assam. Um, it, it, in the first, like, scene almost first couple of scenes he you know he he's, he's kicking show, ass he's kicking ass but <laughs> he's not taking no you know he has pride about who he is and where he came from and he's not letting these irish guys call him all these derogatory names he's not letting these people treat him like a dog and i didn't you know that's what i that was the first thing i noticed oh he's not like you know subservient he's not like right. just taking this stuff um and there's some it's some derogatory terms i've never heard before what is an onion <laughs> right, so, oh, that's not that's not a racist term. That's not. That's, oh, no, okay, okay. I was like, I'm calling Chinese people that's, onions. That's, that's, no, <laughs> what only that? only yeah, only oh. Chinese people are calling other Chinese people onions. Onions. It, oh. it's, it's a it's a trans it's a loose translation of a piece of Cantonese slang that just means scumbag. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's a duck? That's what the uh, in our show. That's what the uh, Chinese people in Chinatown refer to the white people as. Um, you know, in that we made up because actually in, in Cantonese slang, a duck is a prostitute. But we uh, we okay. like we like giving them their own slang just to kind of give them a little more street savviness. So we, we sort of made their slang a combination of uh, translations of Cantonese slang. And then we just sort of made some of it up ourselves. Um, why, why, why was it, Shannon, uh, for you, why is it important that this is developed and became a series today? I mean, you know, first of all, it's it's been such an honor and a privilege to finish my father's work. Yeah. Right? To be able to do that for him, to ex- be able to extend his legacy and, and have this opportunity to tell these stories. You know, I mean, my father wanted this story told. Uh-huh. And and to, to get the opportunity to tell that story and to cast who we want to cast and, and also tell the story how we wanted to tell it. And I remember when Justin Lin came to me initially, he, uh, he said, the, we should only do this if we do this right. Uh-huh. You know, and so we needed to find partners like Jonathan and Cinemax who were who were going to let us do tell the story the way we wanted to tell it. Uh-huh. And it's and it's important part of history that that people don't know about. You uh-huh. know, and when I when I talk to people and tell them about this about the show, and I say, oh, it takes place right before the Chinese Exclusion Act, they say, what's, what is that? They're like, what's that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so you know, it's important on a number of levels. It's important for my father and his legacy. Um, uh, it's important to tell the story. It's important to to have this rich Asian cast that gets to play like real fleshed out human characters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so so there's a lot of reasons to do this show. Uh, we we would often have conversations about who was the first globally recognized mixed martial artist, you know, <laughs> and um, all of us say Bruce Lee. Yeah. Absolutely. Is this yeah. true? Yeah. Would you say would you, would you say that's true? Yeah, I mean, you know, what he was doing, he didn't call it mixed martial arts back in the day, but he, what he call it? So he had his own art called uh-huh. Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do. And yeah. and it was this notion that like uh it, it, it whatever works, uh-huh. right? Like it was it Jeet Kune Do was street fighting. It was not meant to be a sport. It was uh-huh. meant to be like you could do anything like eye gouges, uh-huh. whatever, right? But also um it was like you know, here I am in a fight Right. What is the most efficient way that I can take you down and also be prepared for anything that you might throw at me? So, okay. so you know, in that way, he looked at he studied grappling, Western boxing, even fencing, like because fencing has this uh, has this um, move where you cover a long distance in a really quick, short amount of yeah. time. So bridging that gap in, in a fight quickly. So, you know, he was he mm. was bringing it all all the weapons together <laughs> well, I, and, you know and I know he's often misquoted uh, but uh, there was something he said and I was paraphrasing in my head I just wrote down tell me if I'm accurate or not okay and that I thought was really interesting uh, to which your point adapt what is useful reject what is useless and add what is specifically your own yep exactly your dad said that right he did and that's that's you can do now let me explain how those same principles worked for us in hip-hop culture all right okay let me read what it says adapt what is useful so we didn't have instrumentation we didn't have instruments in our homes you know and they were pulling out music programs all over elementary and junior high schools Mm -hmm. and so what we adapted to was the sampling machines and the drum machines because that was useful that enabled us to 
to grab music and, and create musical uh, montages mm -hmm. um, that we call songs. Uh, reject what is useless. So what came before us that wasn't, you know, relatable to our audience now and our voices um, that wasn't that was was useless. We took away and then specifically make it your own. So one of the big principles that we had to follow was being innovative, mm -hmm. being your having your own identity, using your own voice to create something that's specifically your own. We are in hip hop followers of Bruce Lee. <laughs> Well done. Yeah. No, you I, I, but, I love it. Yeah, but it's, I mean, in many ways, you see the similarities. And when, when, oh, when, totally. And, and when, when I watched this series, even listening to the music score. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, who did the music on this? Well, we, we spent a lot of time on the music. And, you know, we really want, you know, the thing about Bruce Lee is when I read this treatment, it didn't feel like something written 50 years ago. I okay. think he was always groundbreaking and he was always looking to break barriers. And you know, we didn't want to score this like a period piece, and we didn't want to score it like a martial arts show. We wanted it to really have its own flavor, which to us was a combination of a Western and street and hip hop and all of that. And so I don't know how far you guys have gotten, but you know, every se every episode ends with a Chinese hip hop song. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and in the interim, we just wanted it, we we just wanted it to feel street and fresh and completely unpredictable. So um, we work with uh, these two composers uh, out in LA, Scott Salinas and Reza Saifina, and. Uh, they just they were huge martial arts fans and they were huge Bruce Lee fans and they totally understood what we were trying to do. They made those beats. Um, and, if you're talking about everything in the show, yes. Yeah, yeah. Other than uh, the and, last, the other end, than the stuff at the end, which is licensed music. Sounds yeah. great. Um, yeah. Even the dialogue I thought was interesting because I'm I'm hearing you know people speak in a vernacular that's relative to today. Like it doesn't always sound like 1878, yeah. but I think the most impressive thing. It, maybe you could build on that, DB, is how you seamlessly fuse from can people speaking Cantonese to each other into English in mid-sentence. What was the purpose of that? To What made I, you do What we really wanted to do was, you know, this show is about about the people living in Chinatown, but we wanted it, we wanted them to be the most accessible characters to the viewers. Okay. If you have them singing Cantonese with subtitles, then you're, you're making them other. You're sort of removing them. Mm. You know, we wanted them to be the heroes of the show in a way so but we want you to know you're not hearing english you're hearing cantonese so what we do is we start them off speaking just enough cantonese that now we've set the tone they're speaking cantonese and then we do a little bit of a sound effect then they merge into english and so you you always understand that even though you're hearing it in english you're really hearing cantonese and that's why if there's anyone non-chinese interacting with them you'll go back to hearing cantonese yeah you know you'll only hear them in english when they're alone and I feel like I'm learning Cantonese as I watch the show. That's the other point. Y'all yeah. even mentioned well, So that. do our <laughs> actors, because yeah. just about none of them can speak it. Oh, really? So yeah, it's, uh, feel it, though. It's All right. Uh, right. Uh, man, we have Jonathan Tropper and Shannon Lee are here. Uh, Trace, you got a question? Yeah, and so brilliant what you were just saying, Jonathan. I'm stunned by that. Um, Shannon, Jonathan, obviously this is more than a creative endeavor. There's another layer to it because of legacy. How did you guys stop yourself from not asking like a million people, is this okay? Is this accurate? Would he be happy with this? Well, I think that comes I, I think that comes from my father himself like, you know, he had a saying, I'm not in this world to live up to your expectation and you're not in this world to live up to mine. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, I operate my father's legacy by by what I feel he, uh he would be important to him and what he would want and what's important to me also and and we just did that amongst ourselves yeah. although I, I would often call Shannon and say is this okay <laughs> <laughs> well and I was a little bit the Bruce Lee police because like yeah. we would read through the script and I'd be like yeah let's take this out you uh, know mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the temptation is to just put in homages everywhere right, if, right, you're, right. if you're a big Bruce Lee fan <laughs> you'll see in the fight scenes we put in certain things that are very clearly right out of Bruce Lee movies, movies like, yeah, I saw and every once in a while Shannon will say okay you know let's save some for next season let's <laughs> Just, yeah. Okay, cool. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Speaking of being a fan and watching this, there was uh, there was even a fight scene where it almost reminded me of the Wong Jack Man, you know, battle that Bruce Lee had mm. that a lot of people talk about to this mm. day. Break that down, though, DB. Not everybody know that one. Okay, so yeah. there was this. Bruce Lee was sort of the the guy in the neighborhood who was uh, the people who didn't like him training outsiders mm -hmm. of the specific martial arts uh, at the time, and so they said, "We want you to fight our best fighter." 
So they put them together, and this became this. I mean, you can look it up. You can watch yeah. videos or whatever you want to do. It's even depicted in uh, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, which came mm-hmm. out in 93. There's this epic battle between him and the, the other badass that they brought to fight Bruce. But um, there was a little, which I felt, I might be wrong, but it, it, uh, seen in the in the series. Uh, the thing I wanted to touch on was you being the owner of the property, mm-hmm. I know that when somebody of historical significance passes and you have something of theirs that hasn't been put out yet, you're kind of guarded about who you want to be able to be behind the scenes of bringing that to life. Yep. You know, uh, what did you do besides uh, Jonathan and Justin Lin bringing them on board? Like, how was your decision? Like, how do I know I can trust them to actually stick to what I want or what my father would want? Well, so, you know, when Justin called me up and, and you know, I always walk into a situation like that, just a little guarded, like, OK, because because. You know, I've been running my father's legacy since the end of 2000, but it it took, you know, 15 years to get to a point to find a partner who would be willing to do this the way that I wanted to do it and also not just push me aside. Many people see Bruce Lee as this, like, bright, shiny object that they want to exploit. And they come in and they say, oh, we want to do this project, we want to do this film, or we want to buy your company, or we want to do this or do that. And and basically they're just like, let us just write you a check and then you go over mm. here and and don't worry, we'll do a good job. And I'm like, no. Oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, not how that works. That. No. <laughs> yeah, but the great thing about Justin also is like Justin directs these gigantic movies, right? Yeah. Justin's not in TV for the money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a fast. He's already <laughs> right. three yeah. through six, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 He's doing nine right now. Like he, he doesn't yeah. need the money. So he only does something because in TV because he feels it should be done. Yeah, and Justin is a is a is a really good stand-up guy and the thing is he came in and he said we should do this the right way. We should do this how, you know, your father would want it. And I said, "Okay, but I need to be involved in it." And he yes. was like, "Of course you need to be involved in it." Which is by the way what everybody says in the right. room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, come on, Shannon. <laughs> right. That's your chair. And then they send you the contract and it's like, "Oh no, you don't actually have any approvals. You don't actually get to participate, you mm-hmm. know." Um but that was not the case with Justin. He was like, "We're partners." We're we're equals. We're doing this, and and I was and it was in writing, and it was not only that, but just you know him as a human being. Like we related to one another, you know, on that level, and so and so I knew that this was the right fit. Wow, man! Uh, Jonathan Tropper is here. Shannon Lee is here. You want to talk with them? Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Okay, so Shannon, now that you're here, um, <laughs> um. <laughs> <coughs> Your father developed a method of punching, the one-inch punch. Yep. Uh, Don't I, say you can do it, because I'm uh, not buying that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell Shannon. I was about an inch and a half. Oh, okay. <laughs> and was able to punch through some sheetrock before. Uh, joking. <laughs> joking. You were trained by one of his students? Yes, a man by the name of Ted Wong. What Ted Wong. What mm-hmm. was he like? What was Ted Wong like? Yeah. Ted was amazing, actually. Um, so he was one of my father's students, and he was m- the only student of my father's who came to my father as what my father called a blank slate. Okay. He had never trained in martial arts. Most of the people who trained with my father had started in some other martial art and then come to him, but not Ted. Ted was a, a complete blank slate, and he really had to kind of say to my father, like, no, I really want to do this, I really want to do this. And because of that, like, my father was his only teacher. Mm-hmm. And he was this really loved lovely, um, you know, soft-spoken guy. But after my father passed away, I mean, he just continued to train and continued to train and continued to train. And he didn't actually start teaching for many years because, and if you like saw his volume of the Tao of Jeet Kune Do, it was like falling apart and it had like underlines and writings and dog ears and he had like gone through all of the moves and broken them down because he was an engineer like Uh scientifically and like you know what created the you know why had he chosen this and like and testing all of it and so he was this really um, like learned and trained man over many many decades and he was a a wonderful teacher. Uh, As uh, a what what did he share to I'm sure he shared with you what your father was like as a man i know you were young when he passed but Mm -hmm. is anything he said about your father that you learned from him and and his personality and who what was he like yeah you know you know one of the things ted said to me (coughs) is um he said you know what i think a lot of people don't know about your father is that he really cared about people 
Uh huh. And he said, you know, when I uh, when I first got to know him and I was training with him, and you know, he took me in and he and he let me train in his school, even though, you know, I just he Ted lived in Chinatown at the time, and my father was opening his third school in Chinatown. He just saw this flyer and he knew who my father was from the Green Hornet and stuff, and he was uh-huh. like, oh, this is cool. I'm gonna go down there. And, and was he the first one that walks in in Dragon? The, the first guy that comes into school when he was like, I remember there was somebody that they yeah. put in the, in, in the movie. It could be. I, I, I don't really remember exactly. It's been a while since I've okay. seen All Dragon right. Ball. Damn, BB. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she had a cameo in the movie. That's why I did. It's true. I was in the movie. Um, but yeah, he kind of showed up and, 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 and I think at first he felt like he didn't really belong there, but then my father took him in and, and my father got to kind of know him. And, and at one point he said, to, looked at Ted, cause you know, my father was all about style, right? Mm-hmm. And so he looked at Ted and he was like, <laughs> you need a haircut. I mean, you need some new clothes. He's like, do you have a girlfriend? How are you going to get a girlfriend looking like this? And so he, he took Ted out. My father used to cut hair. Uh-huh. So he cut Ted's hair. He took him shopping. He got him a weight set so he could like bulk up a little bit at home uh-huh. and um, and really sort of like took him under his wing. Yeah. And he was like, he just, you know, he didn't have to do that. He was busy. He was, you know, trying to make, he had these, you know, famous students like James Coburn and Steve McQueen and, uh-huh. and you know, all these people, but, um, um, and Kareem and all these people. And, and he didn't have to spend that kind of time on me, but he cared about. Yeah us you know he cared about human beings Mm -hmm. thank you shannon um i will be remiss you know we always heard these when bruce passed and and then when brandon passed it's all these the the family curse Mm -hmm. myths that go around and Mm -hmm. you're you're an actual family member Mm -hmm. um and um and i even read that um your grandparents believed that there was i don't know if this is true or not mm. that 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 it was a no. there's different there's, there's different the stories internet says okay, a million things, things. Yes. okay all right forget forget <laughs> what i said right there what are your thoughts on that does that frustrate you or do you think it just keeps the name out the lore the mystery about the family or i mean you know i understand it i understand that you know people want to people want to 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 draw stories together and and talk about coincidences and and all of that. So I understand like the desire to create a story like that that there's a curse. Um I don't believe in a curse. I mean, okay. if I did, I I would be afraid to leave my house. I would be afraid to live, mm-hmm. which which is completely a, a, the antithesis of what my what father, father was about yeah. yeah exactly yeah and if anything those two men did was live their lives my brother and my father uh-huh. i mean like they went for what they wanted uh out of life they were bigger than life they were um boisterous and caring and loving and uh-huh. funny men and you know for me to like shrink back and hide under a blanket because i think there's a possibility that there's a curse on my family i mean it's just it's just not i just don't give it that power i'm not okay, i'm not going to give it that power yeah okay cool yeah all right let's get back to that one inch punch okay yes <laughs> okay. ted taught me how to do the one inch. you could punch. do the one inch punch <laughs> well it's been a minute but yes can i can i see it <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! This might be the oh, last no, day of sway in the morning. Really done wow! It. Oh, look, I, oh, I, I can I, tell. I can I, tell you. I can tell you a little bit about it. We could punch Rick Myers' book. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> films of fury. From my, this is my dude. <laughs> can you show it like in slow mo? Like well, so, well, so here. I'll, so I'll just describe okay, it. So okay. for a second. So. <laughs> The one inch punch is about generating power all the way up through your body uh-huh. into your fist, right? And uh-huh. you have a vertical fist because a vertical fist has more impact, uh, more solid impact than a than horizontal. A horizontal. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. And the okay. thing is, is that you kind of <laughs> want, you, it's really, I mean, it looks like it's just this, right? But it yeah. really comes all the way up through the body. So it starts with your feet uh-huh. and generates up through your <laughs> hips, which you torque and then you throw your arm but you cock your wrist at the last minute to make it kind of like the, a whip Twist. yeah okay you know yeah. so it's like a whip like this action so that it's coming up through your whole body and then coming out like this and so you're really just like you know like putting all of it uh, into no. it like that and it you know i mean certainly if you practice it the more power you have what's but. the what's the most power like were you able to Bust through boards, or when you perfected, <laughs> or when you got to your peak at it, like boards don't hit back. back. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. She said it. Oh, oh, wow! 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 
I used to take that. Let me just. Uh, I, used to do, I used to do a show called the Ten O'clock Bomb in San Francisco on 106 KML, and I we used to take my partner King Tech, and I used to take excerpts from your dad's movies mm. and make them into sweepers mm. in between songs, and that was the. That's a good one. Okay, let me get. What, can I take a? I'm gonna take a quick call. Hold on one second. All right, all right, all right, all right let me see. Uh, uh, Jeff from uh, Florida. Good morning, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you guys doing today? Doing well. We got Jonathan Troppers here. Shannon Lee, Bruce Lee's daughter, is here. Go ahead. Well, Shannon, first of all, I just want to say thank you for uh, bringing this project to life. You know, like everyone said, it is something that we need to see. And, um, you know, it does show the great diversity that we have in this country, mm-hmm. you know, and how it wasn't just, you know, one group of people that helped build it. That's right. Absolutely. But um, I did want to go to the uh, conversation earlier where, you know, they were talking about the uh, the the fight with Jack Wong. There's actually a whole movie. I don't know. A lot of people may not know about it. The Birth of the Dragon, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which uh, I have on my computer, so I watch it all the time. But um, you know, it, it tells the whole story, you know, about what happened and how supposedly, you know, um, your dad, you know, was kind of like, you know, being a little egotistical and kind of lost his way, you know, as to why he was doing this in the first place. So that movie is pure fiction. Pure fiction. Pure fiction. That fight never happened. The fight happened. Okay. That's the only thing in that movie that's true. Okay, because they portrayed it as <laughs> if your dad was could have lost the fight in that movie. No. Right? So okay. my mom was at that fight. Your mom was Linda? Yeah, my mom, mom was at that fight. At that fight. She okay. was eight months pregnant with uh-huh. my brother at the time, and that fight only lasted three minutes, and my father won. Uh-huh. And and I can tell you exactly what happened. And by the way, that was Oakland versus San Francisco, that fight, because yeah. my father had his school in Oakland, and it was the San Francisco Chinatown traditionalists that uh-huh. didn't like what he was doing, and they um, got their fighter, and and I actually feel for Wong Dokman because he really didn't have a dog in this fight. He uh-huh. just he just was brought in as the as the the guy to fight Bruce Lee, yeah. which which didn't turn out well for him in his life. <laughs> so <laughs> decisions, decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and they came over and they said, okay, we're going to have um, this fight, and these are the rules: no this, no this, this. And my father said, no. We're fighting because they because the stakes were they said if you lose you have to stop teaching, and 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 he said if we're fighting for those kind of stakes then we're fighting for real okay. like we're no rules, and so uh, the fight started. My father came out really fast and strong. Mm. Wong Jokman was kind of thrown off um, uh, thrown off balance. He was he realized he was you know up against somebody really tough and he and he started backpedaling a little bit Mm -hmm. and then he turned and started to run and he ran around the room and my father was chasing him Mm -hmm. trying to grab him from the back and punch him from the back and um and he finally got a hold of him and whipped him around and uh wong jackman tripped and fell down and my father jumped on top of him and started punching him punching him punching him and said um do you give up and which in chinese is fuck him fuck Mm-hmm. Which is, do you give up? And he said, I give up. And, and that I, was it. Oh, that's the story. We got it right there. We got the truth right there. <laughs> that's the one. And, and, I, and I, I really feel because, you know, Wong Jokman is um, a consultant on that film, Birth uh-huh. of the Dragon. And I think he's been trying to rewrite history for a really long time. There's actually a really great book called Striking Distance, um, Bruce Lee and the Dawn of Martial Arts in America, that talks all about this fight and who all the characters were behind it and the history of it and all of that and how and how the traditionalists were in San Francisco and the non-traditionalists were in Oakland. And uh-huh. there were a group of them, of which my father was one, and how this all came came to a head in that way. Did, did your father train Black Panthers? Um, you know, I mm-hmm. don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, uh-huh. you know. I, I feel like they would have walked the same, same path. Yeah, Non-traditionalists, for sure. you for know, sure. against the status quo, mm-hmm. trying to change, you know, push culture forward. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I could see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean. Yeah, Bruce I mean, Lee was a Black Panther? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my. We have our next TV show. There it is. <laughs> Shannon Lee, thank you. I love you. You're my sister. You don't even, now you know it. You're my sister. And I know you got kids, right? I have one daughter. One daughter. Tell us you got an uncle. <laughs> I will. All right. All right. Uh, Jonathan Tropper.
Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for what you created. We're actually talking tonight, right? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. You know where it's at? Uh, I... Some, somewhere, yeah. Somewhere in Brooklyn. Know, somewhere in Brooklyn. Oh, no, 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 you guys can share an Uber. Hold on, man. We're going to look this up. I, I think you can share an Uber. All right, hold on. Let me find out exactly. Got you got it? You. Get that for me, Shannon. Oh, this is yeah, looking, right. looking, it is Say it again. At Villain 307 Kent. Oh, Villain, excuse me. Villain 307 Kent Avenue. Yep. And you, can people still RSVP? Or is it? It, okay. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. my Doors God. Doors open at 7. Screening starts at 7.30. Uh, Guru is going to be on that panel discussion. <laughs> producer, music, uh, music uh, mixer, producer, DJ for Jay Z. Um, Shannon is going to be on that panel discussion. Uh, John, are, Jonathan, you on? No, it? I'm you taking know? the night off. Oh, okay. Uh, Uriah Hall. Self care. The Kenjas are. The ninjas, the ninjas are performing? No, Kinjas. The Kinjas. 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 I was like, the ninjas. I was like, oh, they're bringing ninjas too? I know the Kinjas are, but who's the ninjas? All right. Kinjas are performing. Um, um, Anna uh, Rockefeller uh, Hernandez, I believe. Her uh, Garcia. The Garcia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rockefeller. She's one of the most re- revered and celebrated B-girls Latin. That, that, that came out of hip-hop culture. She'll talk about... Um, Bruce Lee and, and and his impact on the Latin community. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nathaniel Brailford, uh, uh, he's a blogger and a sort of, he calls himself a, a, a black a, nerd. A black nerd, yeah. But he got a wealth of information. He's going to be able to speak on the correlation um, of uh, between hip hop uh, and kung fu, kung fu and dance culture. We got you know it's it, and even fighting mixed martial arts. You know as it is today, um, Hollywood. When you see movies like Kung Fu Panda. You know, all these <laughs> rush hour, <laughs> rush hour, you know, the impact, you know, that um, even we had Jackie Chan on the show, too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Jackie Chan was a stunt man on oh. End of the Dragon. Yeah, he's one of yeah. the guys who yeah. gets whacked in uh, the basement fight. In <laughs> yeah, Under in the, the cave. Drag. Yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah, yeah he, he, he spoke so highly of your dad, yeah. you know. Uh, Shannon Lee, thank you for coming through. Jonathan Tropper, thank, thank you. you. Don't Pleasure. forget Warrior premiere on April 5th on Cinemax. Make Woo! sure you watch it. All right, we got Celebrity Wire up next. Yup, and Trump got something to say about Jesse Smollett.